bassoonist for Leamington Symphonia, um, but I'm also a doctor of astrophysics um, at the University of Warwick, and this is the campus observatory. Um, this is our telescope that we use for teaching undergraduates, um, doing lab experiments, and observing things like star clusters, and occasionally even some of the planets. that is Jupiter. Um, it's by far the biggest, most massive planet. The mass of Jupiter is two and a half times all of the other planets put together. It completely dominates the place. And actually, we think that might be a good thing because there are some ideas out there that maybe Jupiter helps protect the small inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, from comets and asteroids that are coming through the solar system and instead of reaching us they get swept up by Jupiter's gravity and they hit it instead. So it's had the most impacts of any, um, any planet in the solar system. It's banded, um, those stripes that you see on Jupiter in the pictures, those are clouds of um, different gases, ammonia, hydrogen, helium. The great red spot, which I have to say sadly is actually gradually shrinking over time. Um, that's just a massive cyclone, um, a supersized version of the kind of storms that we get here on Earth that's just last lasted for centuries. Um, like everything in astronomy, the timescales are a lot longer than we used to on Earth. It has a lot of moons. Um, it's got 92 moons. Um, but the, there are four that are really the, the biggest and the, the most well known, those are the Galilean moons of Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede, that, as the name suggests, were discovered by Galileo with his telescope. Jupiter, the music is on its dances. Um, it moves from one scene to another gradually and calmly, and the middle part of the movement is probably outside of Mars, the most famous piece of the whole work. Um, it's been turned into hymns, it's been used as the theme tune for various things over the years. But actually, it's not universally loved. Um, some of Holst's family think that the theme has been overused um, and has actually compromised the rest of the work because it's, it's overplayed. The music is majestic, it has a soothing bass line, um, it has, moves through gradually through tempo changes, rhythm changes, lots of different subjects, and it shows influences of English folk music, and it's quite lively and jolly and happy in that sense. Um, hence the title, The Bringer of Jollity. Jovial, which we think of as uh, a description of someone who's quite friendly and happy, is actually an ancient form, adjective form of Jupiter. So next on our journey outwards through the solar system is Saturn. Um, Saturn's actually my favorite planet, and the reason for that is the rings. Um, although the other giant planets all have rings as well, Saturn's are easily the biggest and the most spectacular. It has seven main rings um, and there are gaps between them that are caused by some of Saturn's many moons, um, shepherding material out of the way and keeping them confined into those, those ring shapes. Um, the rings themselves are mostly ice, they're just lumps of ice and with occasional rocks floating around in there as well. Saturn has 53 named moons, so quite a lot fewer than, than Jupiter. Um, and actually the biggest moon of Saturn, Titan, is bigger than one of the planets. It's bigger than Mercury. Um, but because it's orbiting 
a planet, yeah, it's a moon rather than a planet in its own right. Saturn has some of the strongest winds in the solar system. Like Jupiter, it's, it's banded, it has clouds of different gases in it forming stripes, but they're all very similar colours. And the winds in those clouds can get up to a, about 800 miles an hour. One of my favourite facts about Saturn is that it's less dense than water. So if for some reason you could find a body of water big enough, Saturn would actually float in it, um, which is really weird um, when you think about it. Musically, Saturn is the bringer of old age. And this comes partly from um, some of the astrology ideas that Holtz used to inspire his music. You can hear the ticking of a clock in the opening flute section, um, and then the movement gradually moves through a series of events indicating the passing of time. Saturn was actually Holtz's favourite movement, um, and it represents somewhat of a return or a shift away from the calmness of Jupiter back to the slightly spikier, more painful sense that you got from the earlier movements. Part of the reason for that slightly difficult sound is the pairing of chords that Holst uses, where you put fourths and fifths up against ninths, and that gives it a somewhat grating effect. Saturn in Roman mythology was the god of wealth and agriculture, and the equivalent in Greek mythology was the god Cronus, or time. The movement marches forward slowly and inevitably. Um, you hear a trombone bringing in uh, a solo and perhaps a voice of wisdom, and then the movement gradually reaches uh, an air of acceptance and reconciliation towards the end as time reaches its conclusion. Hopefully that's whetted your appetite for um, the planet's music. Um, if you want to hear the music I've been talking about and make your own connections to the planets, then come along to our concert on Saturday, March the 25th at 7.30. Um, it's been held at All Saints Church in Leonington Spa, and as well as Holst's The Planets, we're also performing the music from 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, otherwise known as Also Sprach Zarathustra by Strauss, um, and then we have the premieres of the works by our composition competition winners. Um, these will be world premieres never before heard, um, so if you want an evening of fantastic music, please come along.